Sometimes, you can't even get away from a ghost while at work. Today, I'll tell you four tales of people who couldn't get their work done without having to deal with a ghost or two. So sit back, relax, let me lead the way, and let's get scared together, 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 together. Nine years ago, I was supervising a repair shop for a local government. There were maybe 70 people total that worked there. An older man was hired in a different section than me. He felt he needed to make a name for himself to get a promotion, and he did so by causing a scene whenever anything went wrong. No matter how small the issue, he blew it up into a big to-do and acted like the world was coming to an end, and turned something that should have taken five minutes to correct into a five-hour ordeal of explaining things out once he riled everyone up. Even worse, he would then fall back on the old standby of, It wasn't me. I didn't know anything about it. To try and pass the blame off that was firmly his. He ended up getting his wish, and he was promoted, but thankfully not in my department. We despised one another greatly. Now that he was a boss and had responsibilities, he could no longer hide behind excuses because the buck stopped with him. He knew exactly how I felt about him and his leadership skills, or lack thereof. One time, he was making a major error with one of his projects. I knew it was happening and could have stepped in to help him out, but he brought out one of my worst character flaws when it comes to dealing with an asshole. That is, I like to let him twist in the wind for a while, then show them up. I waited for just the right moment, then said in front of everyone, Hey, there's a problem here. You're doing it all wrong. I explained what to do, then just walked away. In the end, it wasn't the actual problem that I exposed that got him into trouble, but the fact that he was hiding his mistake and proceeding with it. He was caught in a lie and continued lying about it when he was confronted. That was the issue. He got in trouble and they wrote him up for it, and he had the nerve to be mad at me. I told him he was lucky I reported it before it became a much bigger problem. Something really could have gone wrong. So we really hated one another. The following week, he didn't show up for work. Now this guy never missed a day, so when he didn't show up, We knew something was wrong. They had the police go do a welfare check on him, and they found him at home in bed, dead. Within an hour, everyone at work heard the news. A few people that knew I didn't like him came up to me and asked how I felt about his death. I did not do the politically correct thing and say something nice. I don't believe that people become saints just because they die, but I usually keep my mouth shut but not this time. I said exactly what I felt, that death did not negate the fact that this guy was an asshole. So to hell with him. At the end of that day, everyone had gone home except one person who was in the office with me. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a shadowy outline of somebody standing in the doorway of my office, and I just knew it was him. It was a bit blurry, but it was him. He was all red-faced and breathing hard with anger, presumably towards me, and standing there in the doorway. Now I'm not afraid of a ghost, so I said under my breath, You're still an asshole. As soon as I said that, he took off running towards me like he was going to tackle me. It all happened so fast I didn't even have a chance to react until I could almost feel his breath on my face. Then I jumped out of my chair and fell to the floor, and I started laughing. The guy who was still in the office with me was looking at me like I had lost my damn mind. I explained to him what had happened and what I had said to the apparition. He said to me, Don't you know you're not supposed to speak ill of the dead until after the funeral? And he was right. 
For a couple of weeks, I felt that ghost hanging around, almost stalking me. But after he was buried, I no longer felt him hanging around. Rest in peace, asshole. I was working as a cleaning woman in a newer house in the suburbs. The husband was out of town for work, and the mom had taken her kids camping for the weekend, so I was alone in the house. She'd given me a set of keys so I could get in and lock up when I was done. They were on a Hawaiian-themed keychain with two tiny flip-flops attached. This was my second or third time there. She'd told me beforehand that she felt the house was haunted. I had picked up on a spirit myself of a man down in the basement bathroom, and it was corroborated by her five-year-old daughter, who was always saying that there was a man watching her from that bathroom. But I've had a lot of experience with ghosts before, so I was more interested than scared. While alone cleaning that day, it really felt like I was alone. I didn't pick up on the guy in the basement bathroom. In fact, I felt nothing at all in the house. At one point, I was on the second floor cleaning that bathroom, when out of nowhere, I heard a bunch of people in the house, at least four of them. I thought it must have been my client's relatives because I heard them refer to her by name. Now, she had stressed to me before she left to be very careful with the keys because they were the only set she had, and I knew I had locked that door again when I came in. So I just assumed that her relatives had keys and she simply forgot to mention it to me. Then I heard them talking about me, which is another reason I thought it must be relatives. They knew I was the cleaning woman. I thought maybe they came to feed the cats or something. It sounded like two women and two men. One of the women was the most talkative, and she seemed to be the one in charge. I heard her say, Yeah, she's upstairs cleaning. I can hear her up there in the bathroom. I assumed it was my client's parents and grandparents. Then I heard them talking about the keys. I couldn't tell exactly what they were saying, but they definitely mentioned those keys. I thought I'd better be polite and go down there and introduce myself, so I took off my gloves and went downstairs. But there was nobody there, and the door was still locked. I looked around, and I knew that nobody had been in that house with me, because it was really snowy outside, and there was no melted snow inside at all, and the only footprints outside of the door were my own. A giant shiver went up my spine. I wasn't really scared, but it was still very weird to have a bunch of loud ghosts talking about me. I finished cleaning the house with no other issues, then, when I went to leave, I found that my client's keys were gone. The keys that she was so worried about me losing had now disappeared. There was a little shelf right next to the door for the keys, and I knew I had put them there. But that shelf was now empty. I just knew those ghosts had taken them. They'd even talked about it. I spent well over an hour searching the house for those keys, the lock on the door was a deadbolt. It didn't have a lock on the doorknob, so I had to find those keys or leave the house unlocked, and my client wasn't coming home for another day or two. It was so stressful. Those ghosts could have put those keys anywhere. At one point, I even said out loud, Please, give me the keys back. But it didn't help. I finally found them in a basket full of odds and ends on top of the refrigerator. Now there is no way I would have ever put them there myself. It's far too cluttered and out of the way. And they were the same set of keys. They had the same Hawaiian keychain with the flip-flops. I was never so relieved to find a set of keys in my life. I was starting to think I'd have to spend the night there on the couch rather than leave the door unlocked. And that was not a comforting thought. The next time I saw her, I told my client about the ghostly visitors hiding the keys, and she got really freaked out about it. 
I never cleaned there again, but not because of the ghosts. She just really couldn't afford to have a house cleaner. I'm a residential housekeeper. My partner and I usually clean two to three homes a day, five days a week, some old and some new. Most times, the owners aren't home when we clean. On one job, my partner and I were cleaning a two-story home, and not a very old one either. We were supposed to clean the main and top floor and only vacuum the finished basement. We normally leave vacuuming and mopping for last, so after cleaning the whole house, I started vacuuming in the basement, and my co-worker started mopping the bathrooms. As I was working, part of the carpet got snagged and sucked into the power head, so I shut the vacuum off to remove it. I had just gotten the clog out and was about to resume my work when I heard my co-worker shout down to me from the top of the stairs. Hey, how's it going down there? I shouted back. Good, just had a clog. Almost done. But just moments later, it hit me that that voice had sounded female, but it didn't sound like my co-worker. I walked over to look up the stairs, but no one was there, and I began to feel pretty anxious. I then ran upstairs, expecting to see my co-worker on the main floor, mopping, but she was nowhere to be found. I called her name, and she responded, but from the second floor bathroom. I quickly ran up there and asked if she had just been on the main floor checking on me, and she said no, she'd been mopping the second floor bathroom this whole time, and there was no one else in the house. I told her I swore I just heard her or someone ask me, how's it going down there, and I had responded to them. Well, we were both so freaked out we finished up as fast as we could and got the hell out of there. We told our boss, and she never sent us back to that house again. When I was in my late teens and just finished with college, my first job was working as a graphic artist. The place I worked was in northern England, in a very old, six-story, run-down, converted cotton mill. We manufactured signs and labels, among other things. It was a very beautiful building, but if you weren't careful, it could be a death trap, because the front door opened right out onto the main road, and there was no sidewalk. Also, the building was supposed to be haunted. Once we had a huge order for some signs. To get the job done by the deadline, it required a lot of overtime work. So on a cold, wintry weekend, I put in two 12-hour shifts on Saturday and Sunday, and I was alone in the building for the nighttime half of each shift. During a typical workday, five of the six stories of the building were in use, filled with people, machines, and chaos. But the sixth floor was only used for storage. It was kind of a dumping ground for things that we rarely ever used. Floor number six was dank, dusty, and creepy as hell. In the quiet, you could hear every creak and noise that the building made when it settled. You could also hear and feel the northern winds as they blew through the cracks of the windows and the walls and no light bulbs had been replaced up there for years, so it was dark as well. Pigeons would find their way in, but not their way out. The poor things would end up flying back and forth from one side of the room to the other, before slowly starving to death. You'd stumble upon their dead bodies if you were unfortunate enough to have to make your way up there. I worked on floor number five, right below that creepy storeroom. Sometimes during the work week, when the machines were all shut down, we could hear footsteps coming from up there. People would always go up there to investigate, but they never found anything, so we'd just blame it on the wind. 
The young guys on staff used to joke around and say we had a resident ghost. They even named him Fred. If any unexplained noises were heard, they said it was Fred. If anything was lost, Fred took it. If someone's car keys went missing, Fred hid them. It was all just a joke to them. But there were workers in the building across from us who swore up and down that they would see a man standing alone in the window on the sixth floor. He would just be staring out of the window with a blank look on his face. The workers would then look away and glance back, only to find him gone. Now it's very easy to laugh about a fictitious ghost named Fred on your lunch break, surrounded by 30 other people, but it's a different matter entirely when you're in that same building, working alone, at night. I've always been very interested in the paranormal, and thought it would be really cool to see a ghost, when I'm with a bunch of friends, maybe. But on my own, on a dark, windy night, in a centuries-old building where we hear mysterious footsteps? Yeah, not so much. I got through Saturday okay by just concentrating on the work and listening to the radio. I thought I heard a few noises and did get a little spooked here and there, but I just got on with it. Sunday night, however, was another matter entirely. I was at my drawing board for a couple of hours into the night shift when I heard a noise. I froze, turned on the radio, and held my breath to listen. I definitely heard the creaking of floorboards above me. I decided now would be a good time for a coffee break in the canteen on the fourth floor. One floor down from me, and one floor further away from that storeroom. I already had coffee coming out of my ears, but it was a good excuse to get away from the noises. They were already starting to freak me out. Afterwards, as I returned to my office, I tried to calm myself down by thinking, nothing happened last night, so everything's fine. I started working, and right away, the footsteps began again. They were rather heavy this time, and seemed to be coming from the sixth floor storeroom, but they were definitely footsteps. As much as I wanted to pretend and lie to myself that it was just the wind or the building settling, I knew exactly what they were. Then it hit me. Maybe the young guys I worked with were pulling a prank on me. They were just saying on Friday that I wouldn't last two minutes alone in the dark when I got here. They were probably trying to scare me, maybe even place bets on how long it would take before they could drive me out, and were upstairs right now, laughing their heads off. I decided to creep up the stairs, just to the landing, and see if I could hear anything. There was no way I was going all the way up to the top floor alone, because number one, there were loads of places to hide. Number two, I would never be able to see him up there in the dark anyway. And number three, there are dead pigeons all over the floor, and probably rats, too. That's what I told myself anyway. At that point, it had never even occurred to me what to do if it wasn't them. I went to the stairs and slowly started to ascend when I heard the door to the storeroom creak, then close. It was only then that it suddenly dawned on me what if it's not them? How would they get up there anyway? I had the keys to the building. The owner and his wife each had a set, and I was given the spare one for the weekend. And I had left my set of keys in the door lock downstairs in case there was a fire and I had to get out quickly. Even if they had a set of keys, they couldn't have opened that door because my keys were still in the lock. That's when I really started to get scared. I slowly and quietly backed down the stairs, all the while staring at that closed door to the storeroom. I was trying to convince myself that the door closing was just the wind. It's an old building, after all, and not exactly in good repair. I got back to the office and started to work again, trying to concentrate on the job and distract myself, and I turned up the radio to drown out any further sounds. I was just beginning to get my nerves under control 
when I began to smell smoke. It was faint at first, but it was definitely smoke, like from a cigar or pipe. I knew my boss smoked cigars, so maybe he came back into the building when I was on the landing. Then I heard the footsteps upstairs again, and this time even louder than before. They seemed to be at the far end of the storeroom, walking above my head towards me where I was sitting. That's when I started coming apart little by little. Part of me was saying, I know there's no one upstairs. But the other part wasn't quite as confident. If it wasn't the boss here, then where was the smoke coming from? So I decided to call my boss at home to see if he was there. He told me I could phone if there was an emergency. And this was an emergency. I mean, it could have been a break-in, right? I picked up the phone and dialed his number. And when he answered the phone, I really started to panic. I had been hoping that the noises and the smoke were him. I quickly explained what was going on, and I told him I heard footsteps upstairs and thought that somebody broke in. I sure wasn't going to tell him that I thought we had a ghost. I told him to please hurry up and come to the mill. I then put the phone down, and I looked out the glass door that led to the hallway. The smoke smell was even stronger, and I could actually see it now. And it smelled like pipe smoke, not a cigar. For just a moment, I felt better knowing my boss was coming, but that relief didn't last long because I realized it was going to take him some time to get there. The smoke smell was getting stronger, and the footsteps louder and closer. When I've read about people saying that they froze with fear, I never really believed it. I would think, just run out of there for God's sake, you idiot! But faced with my own terror, I couldn't even think properly, let alone run. I'd been so certain that it was either my boss or my co-workers playing a prank on me. Now, I knew for sure it was neither of those things. And I was terrified. I just stared at the ceiling, roughly about where the footsteps were. They were about ten feet away from me now. Another few seconds, and they'd be right over my head. I held my breath and waited. Whatever this was... It seemed to know that I was alone and afraid. It was either having fun scaring me, or maybe it wanted to hurt me. That thought was enough to shock me into action. I grabbed my jacket and burst through the door. I still had to run from one end of the smoke-filled room to the other to reach the stairs, and then run down five stories to get outside. I kept expecting to see some grinning apparition floating in the now thick smoke. It occurred to me that there may be two ghosts, one upstairs and one on my floor. After all, why were the footsteps on floor number six and the pipe smoke on floor number five? The smoke was now so thick I could barely see, so I didn't want to run too fast for fear of tripping. But when I got to the stairs, I was going down them two at a time. And when I got to the last few steps, I did end up tripping and falling and landed right on my face. I still have the scars today. Thank God I left the keys in the door. I never would have been able to find them and put them in the lock in the state I was in. I was shaking so badly. I threw the door open and ran right out into the street and nearly got run over by a car. The driver swerved and missed me by mere inches, and he was shouting some pretty choice words in my direction, I waited for my boss across the street inside of a taxi company. While waiting, I thought about what to tell my boss about what happened. By the time he arrived ten minutes later, I made the choice to tell him that I thought we had a break-in. Yes, I lied. I thought it would be a lot better for my reputation to say that I tussled with a burglar rather than a ghost or two. I didn't want to get teased by being called Casper or have to listen to them humming the Ghostbusters theme for me every time they saw me for the next 20 years. My boss and I then went back into the building. I was trembling, 
but there was no more smoke and no more footsteps. He stayed with me till the end of the shift, but I really didn't get a whole lot of work done, to be honest. The only reminders of that night are two scars on my shin and one on my head from when I fell down the stairs. Every time I smell pipe smoke, it gives me chills and takes me right back to that night. I have thought about it so many times over the years. Did whatever was in that building scare me in hopes I'd break my neck on the stairs and become a ghost myself and keep it company? Did it try to hurt me by having me run into the street and get killed by a car for the same reason? Was it just a coincidence that the smoke started right when I turned up the radio to drown out the footsteps, so it had to find another way to get my attention? I really don't know. But as a final creepy point, years later, a customer came in and said he used to work in the building after the war. The boss gave the guy a tour for old time's sake. As he passed the storeroom, he said that there used to be a caretaker who hung himself in there. And he actually mentioned that he smoked a pipe. Coincidence? Who knows? All I know is I used to love the smell of pipe smoke. But now... And not so much. Thank you so much for listening tonight and for being part of my family of darkness. Now click or tap on the screen above to hear more stories like this so you can stay scared until we meet again, my friends. <laughs>